There are so many ways that you can bring your pagan or witchcraft practice into your kitchen. After all, from what we know about historical paganism, feasting and prepping offerings for the gods was really an essential part of religious life. And looking at historic witchcraft sources, we know that a lot of the spells and rituals that were done were done in a kitchen. So today I'm gonna to take you into my kitchen and share with you a few ways that I've decorated and organized my space to be in a bit more of a better alignment with my spiritual beliefs and practices. And if you're new here and not yet subscribed, please take a couple seconds and go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, go ahead and click that notification bell. I've noticed that a lot of people that watch my videos aren't yet subscribed to my channel, so definitely take a minute to do that and to join our lovely community. So at first glance, there's probably nothing obvious that would indicate that a pagan witch lives here. But part of that is just the way I like to organize. I'm a bit of a minimalist, so I tend to keep my counters somewhat clear and try to avoid too much clutter. But let's take a quick tour around my kitchen and I'm gonna share with you a few subtle ways that I bring my spiritual practice into this space. One of the first things I want to point out is my besom, which I keep hanging on the side of my cabinets. According to folklore, a besom kept upright by the front door is said to protect everyone within the home from any negative energy or evil spirits. And so far, I think it seems to be working well. My current besom over here is just one of those cinnamon brooms from Trader Joe's, so there's no need to spend a lot of money if you're wanting to bring a witch's broom into your kitchen. I'm definitely of the belief that ritual tools when it comes to witchcraft and paganism don't need to be expensive and even better if you can make them yourself. One of my daily routines is making tea. So I leave a little space on my countertop for my tea kettle. Even though making tea is like a super simple task, I try to infuse a little bit of witchcraft into this process to make it more of a ritual. I do that in two different ways. Firstly, by the choice of what type of tea to drink, as certain herbs have certain magical properties. For example, today I'm having some chamomile tea, and chamomile is associated with luck and prosperity. Herbs and spices in general often have magical correspondences, so pay attention when you're making tea or food to which herbs and spices you're using, as it might be an easy way to incorporate a little kitchen witchcraft into your daily preparation. The other way I like to magic up my food or my tea is by visualization. For example, when I'm pouring water for my tea, I try to kind of visualize a glowing light or a healing energy flowing into my cup. Even though this is super simple, I really think it brings a little extra positivity to my morning routine. Another easy way that I like to bring paganism into my kitchen is by bringing nature into my kitchen by putting some herbs or plants on my countertop. It both kind of helps with cooking and it's a way to make a space that's more attuned to the natural world. For me, this also includes laying out some fruits and veggies so they're near at hand and also provide a bit of natural decor. One of my favorite items at the moment is this wooden bowl featuring the Norse wolf Fenrir. Right now, I'm using it to hold some lemons and limes, but I do occasionally use this bowl as a ritual item. For example, if I am prepping an offering for a Norse deity, I might put the offerings in this bowl, take it outside, find a tree to leave the offering at, and then return the bowl back to my kitchen. This item is actually from a Norse-inspired kitchenware company that I recently started collaborating with called Heimdall's Workshop. They create really beautiful kitchen items featuring Norse designs and rooms, so I definitely recommend checking them out if you are also involved in Norse paganism or if you 
just kind of want a decor piece for your kitchen made out of sustainable materials. I'll leave their link in the description box and I also have a promo code for you guys. You can use the code SCARLET10 for 10% off any item in their shop. Lastly, a really simple way that I infuse magic in my kitchen is by having a tarot card on my fridge. I love tarot spells and magic, and one of the easiest ways to do tarot magic is to simply place certain cards around your home so that they can kind of impart their subtle energy into the space and help you make positive choices. Right now, I have the Queen of Pentacles on the door of my fridge as this card represents nourishment and caring for others. And one of the ways I personally enjoy caring for others is by cooking them food. This particular Queen of Pentacles is from my deck, the Key Tarot. If you haven't heard yet, I recently released my tarot deck that I've been working on with my friend Jamie for about two years. I will leave the link down below if you'd like to learn more about the deck, see more pictures of it, or pick up a copy for yourself. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this short tour of my kitchen and how I like to use this space in a few subtle ways to connect it to my spiritual practice. Next, I'd love to hear from you guys. What are some of the simple ways that you like to bring your spiritual practice into your kitchen? So definitely comment your thoughts down below. And I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a like and I will see you all next week. Bye.